About a week ago, a longtime friend of mine sent me the following email, and I quote, I have lived at times without love, without sex, and without money, but the notion of life without sports is terrifying me. For millions of Canadians, getting home from work, having dinner, then flipping on the hockey game or the Raptors game or the Jays game, that was a treasured routine, a routine that has, of course, been interrupted with the cancellation of all sporting events in all the major pro sports leagues. That's bad enough, of course, but what if your job is to talk about all those sports? What exactly is there to talk about these days? Well, let us find out from Michael Landsberg, who anchors the morning run on TSN 1050 Radio in Toronto, Carly Agro, an anchor on Rogers Sportsnet TV, and William Liu, the lead Raptors reporter for Yahoo Sports Canada. Great to have you guys all here on what should have been, on what might have been opening day down at the Sky Dome for the Blue Jays. But uh, we, ha we do not have that to talk about today. So, Michael, I want to start with you. You're on the air every morning for four hours. What the heck are you talking about for four hours every day when there's no games going on? You know, it's, uh, by the way, good to see you, Steve. Uh, for those that don't know, Steve and I have been buddies for like a thousand years. So nice to see you in, in your element. And uh, my element, which is talking about sports, is has totally changed. I mean, it's like a sports talk show goes from being a sports talk show to a lifestyle show, a political show, a, uh, a medical show, obviously, and to some extent, a sports show. But I think the goal is to talk about the things that people are talking about. And, and people aren't talking about the Raptors right now. People aren't going, oh my, are they going to re-sign Marcus Salt next year or Serge Ibaka or Fred Van Vliet? People are talking about a million other things. So I think our goal is to talk about what they're talking about. And that means expanding the format that we use. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about the pronunciation of pasta or pasta this morning for what seemed like two and a half hours. Is that, that that's the new reality, eh? Oh, you, you see, that that's uh, that's quite an offensive thing to say. That something that you heard me say seemed like two and a half hours. So um, I, I take back all the good things that I was thinking about you. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Carly. When there's no highlights from last night's games to show, what are you doing every morning and and, and late night? Well, the simple truth is, Steve, that the last show that I did, it'll be two weeks ago this Friday. So um, Rogers and Sportsnet made the decision to shut down our in-studio production. Um, it was last Sunday. So the reality for me is that I'm not going into the studio. I'm not in the newsroom surrounded by my talented colleagues and friends. And I miss it. I miss it a lot. I miss the people that I work with. And I miss what we do, which is to your point, um, entertaining people and giving them that reprieve and that enjoyment and that entertainment. I mean, we say at Sportsnet um, all the time that sports bring people together. And it's unfortunate that when we're all together at home that we don't have the comfort of sports. But the truth is, is that I'm not going into work every night and I'm not doing a show and there isn't really much I can do about that right now, but I'm doing my best to stay, to stay connected to what is going on, to stay connected to the viewers through social media, and I'm doing my best to stay connected to what is happening in sports. Um, you know, some way, somehow, Tom Brady finds a way to make it all about him again, even when there's nothing going on. Indeed. I was going to save that issue for later in our discussion, but since you're at it, I mean, Tom Brady to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, what the heck was he thinking? Well, my husband is the biggest Buffalo Bills fan out there, so it was a good day in this household, I will say. He's happy. Yeah. Yes, he's happy. I get that. The Patriots without Brady. Uh, a, a, what are you a talking good day about, if Steve? you're an AFC Steve. East fan. Steve, what are you talking about? What, is, what the heck is he doing going to Tampa Bay? Like, like why, why is that a bad thing? Well, at the risk of talking about sports on a show where we're supposed to be talking about the lack of sports, uh, it t like Tom Brady's the greatest player in the history of the game, and he's going to the worst franchise in the history of the game. Discuss. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. I'll come back to that later. Uh, William, the Raptors are not playing. And when a guy covers the Raptors and the Raptors are not playing, what does he do with his days? Well, I think right now the challenge is just kind of expanding the coverage, right? Like, uh, as, as Michael talked about, you kind of have to, there's a challenge almost in terms of just, again, you gotta, you have this audience, you need to serve the audience and, um, you know, you have the responsibility of what you do with your platform. So I think 
you know, for me, when this thing all happened, especially with the NBA so much in focus, there was a lot of news going on in terms of covering um, just like the news updates. But I think that only goes so far. I think people want to be informed. I think people want to um, I think people just want information. So I, I, the, what I did first was uh, I called up uh, a friend of mine who is an ICU worker here in Toronto. He's an ICU doctor. Uh, and I wanted to get more information on this virus that uh, is affecting the world uh, and especially affecting the world of sports. And, you know, it's it's sort of been sort of that kind of thinking throughout all the content because you can't just make, um, you know, what I, what I would normally do is I would cover games uh, in kind of excruciating detail, but there's no games to cover. I don't think it's that worth it to look back so much on old games. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's about finding just, you know, new things to do. Mind you, I will say, Carly, I really appreciated Sportsnet last night playing uh, the American League Championship Series game where Robbie Alomar hit the home run off Eckersley in the ninth. I watched that last night. And, uh, I, you know, I couldn't quite stay up late enough to watch um, the, the 92 World Series against the Braves, but I will. So I do appreciate the old games. But um, let, me put, let me just, uh, I'll ask Chad Castle in our studio or back in uh, the control room to play this little clip because there's a guy named Nick Heath who's a great play-by-play -play guy for soccer. And, you know, he sort of figured out a way to keep doing play-by-play -play of soccer, even though there's no soccer. Chad, go ahead and roll that, please. Well, you join me here live at uh, Tusing Common. And, uh, well, this is the final of the two lonely blokes in a park contest. And, whoa, that was absolutely terrible. That's what we've come to expect, really, from these two. They've uh, been here for some time. A few runners in the distance not keeping enough distance, frankly. And, uh, well, these two are utterly useless. Looking forward to the third, fourth place playoff later. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a cute way to pass the time, but uh, but but I do need to ask you, Michael, what, what are some of the either clever or different things that you're trying to do to fill those four hours a day when you don't have games to talk about that you might not have been doing under different circumstances? Well, apparently because of your sarcastic remark, I only have another hour and a half to fill because you said we talked two and a half hours about whether it's pasta or pasta. So we'll just move past that. And I won't even correct you that that guy is not a soccer announcer, but a rugby announcer. So I'm not even mentioning that. Um, you know, I, I think the most fun that that we have is is on talking about things that we're all experiencing. I mean, the true bond in radio is that you feel people that are talking to you and the people you're talking to are all kind of linked by the same thing. And at this time, we are all linked by the virus, right? Like every person in Toronto, every person in the world somehow has a relationship to it. So something like etiquette, coronavirus etiquette, everything has changed, right? Like I have a dog, I walk my dog. If you see someone coming in the distance, and uh, you have your dog, they have their dog. Normally you would just wait there and say hi and your dogs would play together or whatever. Now you cross the road. But that would be in a different time, incredibly insulting to someone. So there's all of these things, these new things that are acceptable, in fact, encouraged that we have to learn what's right and what's wrong. And today we ask the question, when this is all over, will you continue? shake people's hands and we put out a poll and I would say it was about 50 50 people saying no nope, I'm done with that although I, I think you had Alex Pietrangelo on from the St. Louis Blues who was asked about that as well and he said yeah I'll go back to shaking people's hands so it's one of the big questions about whether anything is is really going to change when this is all said and done or whether we get back to normal um, you know I and I, I also you, you know you mentioned uh you there's a sense of community that I've never felt before. And it's fun. It's, it's, it's hard to feel it, right? Because it's not like you're out and about and seeing people. But just from walking on my street, there's, there's a feeling of camaraderie with people that maybe you've never felt it with before. We're all like bonded. It really is, because I studied World War II, it really is so many like your, your country as at war. And everybody is linked by the war. Hmm. Uh, Carly, I have to confess, I told you, I, I, I did watch the baseball game yesterday. I will watch a lot more of it because I do enjoy those nostalgic moments. Are you doing that too? Yeah, I am. And, you know, it's it's not just because, um, you know, I miss, I miss watching sports. I think it speaks to Michael's point. I think it's the fact that maybe you're watching something that somebody else is watching too. And then it gives you that opportunity to, to send 
one of your friends a message and say, oh my gosh, you know, I forgot. Do you remember when Vladdy made that, you know, in- incredible catch? And then, you know, like just that opportunity to have those conversations again is really nice. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, when the going gets tough, um, kind of the tough get going. And I thought it was really nice to see, um, I know we've been talking about baseball, but I also thought it was nice to see Sportsnet and TSN team up so that we could re-air the Raptors' incredible run. So I think those kinds of initiatives, it speaks a little bit to what Michael is saying, is that it gives us an opportunity to do things that we've never done before in a way that we've never done before. But that's also, that's how we solve problems in tough times, right? Is coming up with new strategies and new initiatives. And I think that, um, yes, I am watching, but I think it's, um, maybe it's for a reason that I wasn't necessarily watching before. Hmm. William, I was going to ask you, because I, I confess I've dipped into some of the old Raptor playoff games and they're, they're playing the, uh, the series uh, from the last championship season against Philadelphia right now. Are you watching that stuff again? Yeah, you know, um, I, I must confess that I, I feel very bad, but uh, as a millennial, I, I do not have cable, so I have not been uh, following along. <laughs> Unfortunately, I apologize. I apologize. I do have NBA League Pass, so I can watch it any time, really. Uh, but, you know, to this point, I, I do think, you know, even though, um, you know, I said what I said earlier in terms of, like, for me personally, I'm not necessarily watching this again, just because I, I watched it so recently. But um, I, I think there is a lot of use in this time where, you know, life kind of slows down. And I think you get to almost appreciate and sort of cover um, the kind of stories that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do on a day to day basis. You know, like for me, I do a lot of game analysis. And so I'm talking day to day about how Kyle Lowry's doing with his pick and roll play and this and that. And it's a very minute things. But I think, you know, when you have more time to plot it out, you might take this time to look at a story like, Hey, listen, why did, how did Kyle Lowry become, you know, the greatest Raptor of all time, arguably? Um, and what are the steps that it took to get there? And I think the sort of long form storytelling, you know, you have a lot more time on your hands. So you definitely go back and, and research. And, um, you know, it, it from that perspective, as a journalist, it is, it is also interesting. And again, it's a it's a it's a challenge. Yeah. Michael, I noticed this morning that you were also having a conversation. You're running a contest, I guess, on your show right now, but who's the greatest Toronto athlete ever? And, you know, presumably that's great fodder for lots of conversations in the days ahead. Yes. Uh, Yeah, well, let's hope. So we did it like a March Madness bracket. So uh, we had uh, eight on one side, eight on the other. So four matchups that we've had this week. And um, one of them was absolutely uh, riveting because it was so close. It was Josh Donaldson versus Vince Carter. And um, like I, I I picked Vince Carter, and the guys that I work with were so offended by it. Oh, my God. And this is what makes for a good sport. Discussion, right? Nobody wants, oh, I kind of agree, or I don't really agree. This was a fight to the death. Well, maybe not quite to the <laughs> death, fight to the end of four hours. And it was, uh, in the end, Vince Carter ended up winning by like two percentage points on 5,000 votes. So that kind of stuff is good. And you need to do that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, it shouldn't have been that close. Carly, you want to resolve that? Vince Carter or Josh Donaldson? What do you think? Oh, my God. You know what? <sighs> I, w- I kind of want to show you what I have on my desk here because this might this might help some people out there that are a little bit nostalgic. So this would be my this is my 1992 World Series troll. Okay, so mm-hmm. my first um, my first sort of love as a kid. I can't believe I'm showing you this, but this is a Carly Agro in uh, this was 1993, my first Blue Jays game. So I am pretty partial to all things baseball, um, but. I think I'm gonna be on Michael's team here, and I gotta go with Vince. The Vince sanity was so that I not don't know. Not even close. Can, not even yeah. close. I agree. Vince Carter made the Raptors. I mean, for goodness well, sakes. You know, it, the, I mean, the, the issue is that people <laughs> felt betrayed by Vince, right? Sure. They're forgiving him now. He's the longest, longest-serving player in the NBA. They're forgiving him now for all of that. Boy, isn't this funny? I mean, we keep wanting to do a show here where we're talking about what we talk about when there's no sports to talk about, and we can't help but want to talk about sports again. It's become such a, why do we do that, Michael? It's it's just such a part of our fabric, I guess, eh? Well, it's, it was my plan the whole time to try to take the discussion <laughs> away from the normal stuff that you talk about and make it a sports discussion. You know, I, I think that, especially at this time, you know, we're all looking for something better than 
were offered for the most part in the news media right now. I mean, this is such an incredibly depressing time. I was telling you before we went on, I heard this ER doctor talking about how her partner in the ER had to try to resuscitate three people in one shift and they all died. And I thought, oh my God, like I, I, you can't keep focusing on that. You know, I talk about mental health. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that drags you down. So this is like a release. We're talking about Vince Carter, and Josh Donaldson, and that feels way better talking about, you know, do we have to shut down more than we already have? Mm. William, tell us exactly what it is you miss about covering actual games. I mean, I think it's pretty much everything, right? Like, I, I think the conversation, uh, you know, just with people to have that shared conversation, that's, again, as Michael said, not something super incredibly depressing, uh, is just missed on every single level. Um, you know, you see the games. I think, you know, one thing is just, it's obvious, but like games give you fresh things to talk about. There's a new game every other day when, in basketball. Uh, there's there's lots of trends. There's you know the Raptors are a very interesting team. They got a lot of personalities, um, and you know they're having an incredible season. So like I actually just straight up miss watching the Raptors as someone who really appreciates high level basketball. They were uh, an incredible story this year, and I'm hoping that you know uh, obviously it comes secondary to everything else in terms of public health. And hopefully that gets resolved. But I'm really hoping that as a you know someone who covers the Raptors and is a fan of the Raptors, you know, I, I hope I get to see them again. This is an incredible season. And so, I, you know, everything, really. I miss everything. Well, let me pick up on that point. And Carly, I'll put this to you first. There is every indication that the big six sports, and let me just enumerate that I mean the NFL, Major League Baseball, National Basketball Association, NHL hockey, CFL football, Major League Soccer, there's every indication that none of those leagues is going to be back playing games anytime soon. And I wonder whether you've had discussions with uh, your employer or with your colleagues about if this goes on for many, many more months, what does it mean for you guys? So I'll be honest, Stephen, and the short answer to that question is no, I have not yet had those discussions. Um, I will give full credit to our management and to the rest of our sort of top down staff. They've been really good at communicating with all of us um, as far as updates are concerned and what the expectation is for all of us um, to be doing while we're not doing in studio programming. But the reality is, is that no, none of that has been communicated to us yet. Um, I I don't know when that will come, um, but I'm hoping that as soon as a decision has been made, that it does get communicated quickly, not just because I would like to know, but because the fans out there want to know. So yeah, the short answer to your question is no, I have no idea. I have just as much information as everybody else on Twitter does um, at this point. So I think the priority obviously is to, you know, to what William was saying is for people to be healthy and to be able to stay healthy. And if and when things pick up, I can remember the night I was on the desk when we were breaking the news live that the NBA had made the decision to suspend their season. And it was funny because the first question that we were all asking the experts that were on our show was, has this, you know, in your career, has anything like this ever happened before? And then next it was, will can or will or how does it look if and when anything can start up again and i think we're we we probably have much more two weeks ago as we do today i mean we just don't know i think it's almost premature um maybe to start even having those discussions i'm like everybody else i would love to have sports come back but i think we're just at a point in time right now where this is so much bigger than that Mm. Michael, I have to say, I love the way you're tap dancing in the mornings. You have so much time to fill and nothing to cover, so to speak, but you really are making it work. So kudos to you. But do you think about having to do this for two more months or three more months or five or six more months? And what if you do, what do you think of? I thought we were talking about stuff that wasn't depressing. It just dragged me down, Steve. <laughs> um, I think the answer to that is, first of all, what Carly said is true with every aspect of our lives. Nobody has any idea. If you ask a doctor, Dr. Fauci, who is like who is running the whole show in the United States, how long is this going to last? He has no possible way to answer. So, it, you know, sports will be gone as long as society is gone. That, that is not my dog barking. Just so you know, that is not my dog barking. That is Carly's dog. I know it. I know her voice. Uh, Whose so dog is I, that? That's my dog. <laughs> that's Wrigley. Um, so I think that 
however long it goes on for, I kind of feel totally blessed that I still get paid. I, I, I like the challenge, even though I don't like, obviously, the fact that um, we are in a position where the world is collapsing. So I hate the reason for the challenge, but I do enjoy the challenge of saying, OK, you know, your job isn't done for you. Carly knows, uh, and as William would know, day after a game, you don't have to think about you know what you're going to talk about or what you're going to write about. It's done for you, and now nothing is done for you. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to remember if when we booked you for this program, Michael, we asked for the dog to be on as well, and I, I, I'm 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 pretty sure I didn't. Uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't line the dog up, but that's okay. We like dogs making cameos. We had a cat make a cameo on the program the other day. William, uh, talk to us for a second about how much more challenging it is to find those other stories to tell now that you don't have, now that you don't have the game to report on. How much longer do you think you can do those stories about where's Kyle Lowry from and how has his basketball career developed and etc. Um, you know, honestly, maybe it's just uh, because it's early right now in, in the long uh, scheme of things, but you know. I actually think it's there's there's a lot of things to mine for, especially with the Raptors. Like they have a lot of very interesting stories uh, to talk about. I mean, look, realistically, you know, again, just to sort of take it back into the situation that we're in. Um, I don't know, man. This is not the hardest job in the <laughs> grand scheme of things. Even now, it's not the hardest job. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that are working. Uh, you know, especially everyone who's been deemed essential, uh, medical workers, things like that. Like that, that job is way harder. So it almost feels ridiculous, at least personally to me, just to even come on and talk about the difficulty of finding things to talk about in sports. Because like that, you know, that is the job. That even with games on, there's the off season. There's, um, you know, just obviously there's long times, periods of breaks where there's no games on. So I, I think it's actually not that different of a challenge. Um, you know, obviously there's less access. You can't just go up to a player before a game and talk to them. Uh, it's, you know, it's definitely not easy calling up an NBA player, you know. Um, but look, I, 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 that's the job. That's my answer. That's the job. Yeah. Do you worry, though, that, I mean, and this would be a problem for all of you, uh, you know, presumably uh, there are fewer people going to be watching Sportsnet now because you're not showing games. Presumably there are going to be fewer people reading Yahoo now. Michael, do you know whether it's the case, uh, whether or not your ratings are down at all because you're not talking about the game from the night before? You know, I, I, I don't know because I've kind of waited. I wanted to sort of get past the initial, okay, what's going to happen uh, and let it settle in. I know that right now News Talk 1010 is, is going to kill it, right? Because that is, that's where you get news. And that's a sister station to us. So it's like, it's okay for me to mention. If it was a Rogers station, God forbid I would ever mention that. But I, I think that, I think that, and people's listening habits are totally different, right? Nobody's in their car. Nobody's driving to work. So I actually have no idea really what the audience is going to be like. But as, as William said, you know, if, if, if you're lucky enough to still be getting paid to do your job, then you're way ahead of the rest of the world. And if your job is to try to distract people from the pain that they're in from other aspects of your life, then that's a pretty good job as well. Hmm. Okay, Carly, I guess I should ask the question then. Was it a big mistake for Tom Brady to go to Tampa Bay? You know what? I want to say I hate answering a question like that with more of those cliches, but I think we're only it's, – it's one of those we're going to have to wait and see. Um, I mean, I will say I give the guy credit for taking on a challenge. Like whether or not you're a Tom Brady fan or not – I just give him credit for taking on a challenge. And I mean, I'm one of those weird people who's always loved moving and who has always loved a fresh start. So um, if there's anybody who can turn something around, I think he's going to give it 110%. I don't think he's going there with the intention of losing. So, um, I mean, I know he didn't have the weapons around him this past season that he probably would have liked. Um, so I'd really like to see what he could do with a half decent offensive line. Um, and we doesn't have one of the best defenses in the entire league helping him on the other side of the ball. Yeah, this is, this is about the only thing in sports that's happening right now that's of any value of talking about. So Michael, I'm going to get you to weigh in as well. Should Tom Brady have gone to Tampa or is that the dumbest thing in the world? No, no. I, I mean, it's, it's clearly not the dumbest thing in the world. The dumbest thing in the world would probably be asking that question, or at least dumber than Tom Brady going to Tampa. You know, there's so much that we'll never find out that I desperately want to know. Did Bill Belichick want him to come back, or was he happy to let him go? And we're never going to find out, because he's never going to say, oh, I didn't want him back. And if he says, I wanted to let him go, you're not going to believe him. 
So I think that there is so much that we don't know. And if, in fact, the Patriots didn't really want him back, then he had to pick someplace else. And why not go to a place that has two receivers? Why not go to a place that has a coach that you already know? And why not go to a place that, that you are going to have fun in? Like Bruce Arians, allegedly, is a fun coach. Bill Belichick is fun one day a year. When you win the Super Bowl, it's kind of fun that he's your coach. But otherwise, nobody has fun being around Bill Belichick. I'm not even have fun talking about him. <laughs> well, I always have fun when I play with you, Michael Landsberg. And uh, you and I did our first broadcast together at U of T Radio 42 years ago. So it's a delight to be back with you uh, in some fashion of broadcasting right now. And Carly and William, it's a delight to have you on tonight as well. Thanks so much for playing, everybody. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks for having me. And uh, Carly, you want to shut that dog up? (laughs) (laughs) The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.